We will have a look at something like that today. So we have some paint, we have some GTO wizard. We have obviously the presentation. So I took quite some time this morning to prepare the show. Sup sir, nice surprise, or I've missed these streams lately. There's not really a stream. It's the, the poker code free coaching going on. There's one every month that is not for members only. So you can have a look at what we are doing here at, at poker code. Okay, so let's go. As always, I will start with a little overview of what we are doing. We're talking about equity and protection today. So we'll talk about what is actually equity and uh, what is the problem with it, how the term is used. We'll talk about what actually protection is, how they belong together. And then I'll give lots of lots of examples before coming to the to the key takeaways. That's it. Yeah, let's just start. Why not? Right? So five past three, let's go. Yeah, I want to start with a little story because this is always my example. Actually, the story needs to have a real story. We need a face and we need a name. So I don't have a face, but you can imagine one. This story actually happened in Vegas. On a live table, it was a friend coming over to my table, talking to my neighbor telling him a hand history and the hand history was the following that he told his buddy and it's just only the start of it like I wanted to interrupt them actually because it just like oh it was like felt weird what they talked about I don't remember the end of the story let's just say he got stacked but yeah the story is the following that hero in this story open race let's say red kings on the cutoff and the button calls and on the flop let's say this is a 6.1 big blinds in the middle whatever that is and we are playing 100 big blinds deep that is important as well the board is queen 7 6 with a flush draw so lots of straight draws there a flush draw and this guy let's call him Kyle from the US Kyle taking taking rock for rock paper scissors this type of guy and he decides to bet 75% pot and his reasoning is he does it for protection so now this is the first question for the chat where do I see the problem or am I wrong and Kyle just does a great job betting for protection here they are saying drawing hands have too much equity to really protect with 75% sizing and realizing of equity is also higher in position than for out of position you do it says the board chain Changes, not shift over time, shift over certain runouts. Two big investments for protection. Protection against what? I like that. Subano, protection against what? So everything I read is right. The wrong size, better bet two times pot against ace four. In green, small would be better. Not folding hands that have good equity. The only protection we get is folding hands that have two or three outs. High equity draws, the draws you're protecting for are not folding, right? So you see, you get the point. Like this is everything that I try to get out of here. It's just like, actually the question, what are you protecting? against. So I'm always missing the against, right? If you cannot be precise with that, you mess up stuff like that. What you are doing is you're building a huge pot out of position against hands that either have you beat or that have very, very good equity and playability or equity realization in position against you. You bomb it against flush draws, against straight draws. You're pretty much setting up a really bad spot for you to play in a big pot out of position when the board changes and you don't have anything strong anymore on pretty much most runouts. If the run of this deuce deuce good for you it's still not nutted what you have but yeah that's kind of it and what is protecting me and you got it in the chat perfectly it's like protecting means kind of being safe of something and what are you safe of here it's like yes villain folds pocket deuces without a spade he folds pocket fours he folds ace three of clubs so all those hands have either like two or three outs against your hand which is like another point that was great to read and important is like that's not okay for that price right if you bet small here and fold that out we can find a reason for that. It's okay, right? But here it's like, yeah, just imagine like I wanted to use the real story for the purpose of that story. I should have went with like red aces because then actually we're not even having a benefit of folding out ace high anymore. It's just folding out peers. So there's really no point in protection. I don't get it, right? It doesn't make any sense. And now we want to take a deeper look at that today. That's our topics. But the draws you're protecting are not folding for 70. Check race maybe instead, right? Then maybe something is happening button is not folding anything interesting well it's not comfortable post flop you want them to draw twice so we could rephrase the whole story with some reads and then it would be fine so first of all let's have a look how this spot should be played in theory all right so i have some cash ranges here i've prepared that spot in gto wizard so yeah cut off versus a button flatting range this is actually our flop play right villain having just a way higher frequency of a set of sixes and sevens so we have a big nut disadvantage we have very bad equity realization on that draw drawing board out of position and we have a clear range check here and this is what we should do if we bet big what is happening you told me already well blood is folding low pierce and suited aces without the flush draw and maybe some jack 10 of hearts which well we have lots of equity against we could run the numbers now and see that for a 75 percent pot price we kind of folded only out hands that have i don't know 15 percent equity at maximum against us so yeah this is absolutely the point hero in this story absolutely messed up and misunderstood what protection means or just 
use it in the wrong way. If he wants to play the hand like that because we are in Vegas and we want to decide the bet size and everyone is shit, he needs to tell the story differently. He can say like, okay, I deviated from theory here because I want to get the maximum out of a queen and his flush draws because, for example, he never bluffs. He never turns something into a bluff. So I take my, let's say, 65% equity against a flush draw and I just build a pot. And if the board gets ugly, I just can check fold because I know this guy is not bluffing. So I get max against ace queen, against queen jack, against pocket eights, against a random flush draw. And yeah, this way it can make sense. Maybe another line is still better, but that would be fine. But betting kings for protection here is just, yeah, straight up nonsense. All right. So yeah, let's keep going. That is the start for today. And let's see. First thing I want to talk about is what is actually equity? What is that about? I think from your answers, I feel like everyone writing in the chat, at least. I know there are some people out there listening that are not like, confident enough to write in the chat just feel like there's no wrong answer or I won't give you shit for wrong answers so better better like that it's like for those that answered it's, it seemed like it's pretty clear what we are talking about here so it's like I, I just gave you an example to have the brainstorm going a little what is equity you hear that a lot like that I bet a hand because of equity like I continue with my flush draw because I have equity like I have good equity in this hand I have this and that I need to continue my hand is too strong and so on we're like it's just such a term that is used way too often without being precise and this is one of the major key takeaways of that coaching already is we want to be precise and what do we have equity against let's have a look right if we have pocket queens here we could say in general we have good equity on that board what we actually mean is that we have very good equity against villains total range or maybe we mean that we have good equity against villains continuing range whatever the action is right if we just say like a random example like if we have queens and villain has kings we have very very bad equity we would actually have better equity just holding Holding a flush draw or obviously holding the nut straight if villain has the nut straight we better have again the set or the flush draw and not the second best straight so it's like it's always important to know okay what do we have equity against and it's even more important when we are on the bluffing part when we are like having weaker hands it's still important to know okay what are we trying to draw to what do we beat do we actually have equity against hands that villain calls the flop with calls the turn with calls the river with or do we just have equity against his folding range how important is it for us to fold out the range he would fold now if we bet? Does he have equity against us? So this is all the terms that are flying around there is important for me here. But the main thing is to be precise. The more precise you are, the better in the long run, right? It's like whenever I, I, I review hands, right? I'm playing lots of tables as well and I mess up left and right. So Birdie can tell you in the chat. <laughs> and it's just like... Yeah, I look it up and then like usually I understand, okay, what I did there didn't make sense because I was just clicking buttons. Whenever I play less tables maybe or I'm like really in my A game and I like or what I like doing, for example, recording a video for, for Poker Code, I'm talking while playing a lot. And then once you start talking, you start making reasons, reasonings for every move you make. And then once you speak out things loud, it's like usually a way better thing you end up with doing already just because you get to be more precise. And this is kind of the thing I want to start doing from now on for everyone is just that we say equity always needs reference points. We cannot have equity. We can have equity against something, against the folding range, against the calling range, against the three times calling range, against the check raising range, against the specific hand, anything, right? So this is just the way we want to use that. I have good equity against his call on range. This might be something that we think about buffing flop and turn because we might still improve and we know, okay, even if we, like, if we improve, we still have like a value bet against his range. Maybe we only are doing okay against his check down range. We try to bring that hand to showdown, make our hand or just like have a hand in a way, but we have no value. But it's like it tells you whenever you say something like that more precisely, it just tells you your actions that make sense a little more. All right. Uh, I'm just reading every now and then the chat. Do you still not bet the kings when you are only 25 big lines deep? No, it's a totally different spot. My equity realization is way better. I can close the action on the turn pretty much by overbet jamming, something like that. So absolutely totally different spot for 25 picks. We can we can bet a lot there. All right, so let's keep going. It's like always I made that presentation once and I have no clue what's up next. That's kind of a pattern in my coaching. So we all will be surprised together what's next. And okay, let's see. So coming to that, I, I teasered like that in the Poker Code channel that we will see how I put Donald Trump, uh, Dan Blazarian and Bob the Builder into that coaching. And now instead of looking at equities, we want to look at protection, what it actually means. Now let's first go with the literal sense, not in the poker world. In the poker world, what does protection mean? actually. So protection mean that like you are safe in case something happens, I would say, or you make sure that something cannot happen, right? It's like, well, 
as Bob the Builder, obviously on your construction site, there can be something falling down, hitting your head. Like it will still happen, but because you wear his freaking helmet, it won't hurt you. That's like what is protection, right? Dan Bilzerian is like kind of the American thing here. He's probably protecting his family. This is why he need a couple of weapons. Well, maybe he does or does not good, do a good job protecting them, having this kind of stuff, but I like it's, I needed to use that picture. Like Donald Trump obviously builds a great wall there. I don't know what he's actually protecting against by building that wall. Maybe he's just a little overprotecting in the poker sense, but yeah, it's kind of like a massive, massive protection you could go for. Or we have that, that little cute kid there, where it's like actually just protecting against some rain, where maybe you feel it right away. I tried to be a little more precise with protection here. All those four people are protecting themselves in a way. We can argue about one or two of them, but they are in like, in their minds, they are protecting themselves in a way. But by speaking out what they are protecting against or knowing what they are trying to protect against, it tells you which tools they need. And well, this is the same in the poker world, right? So it's like, sometimes you just want to protect against a little rain that might be coming, right? It's it's not going to kill you. And if you miss wearing that little cute Pikachu suit, you'll be all right. If you don't wear the helmet as, as Bob the Builder, you might be in serious trouble. And well, I don't know whether Dan Bilzerian's family gets killed if he doesn't have those weapons, but you never know. And let's not talk about our friend Donald here. So I didn't talk about him as a poker player. No, I, I, I guess he can't play poker. So now this is something to keep in mind, right? And this should transfer over quite well to poker, but I still thought like, okay, what I did was actually poker plus protection was what I put in into Google. I first got to a German poker school. I didn't, well, present that German text to you. So the second page good on that search engine optimization is Upswing Poker. So shout out to our friends from Upswing. And this is what I found there. A protection bet is a bet made with a strong yet vulnerable hand that forces other players who are on draws to either call with unfavorable pot odds or fold. All right, so think about that, right? First thing we need to have the chance to make a protection bet. We need a strong yet a vulnerable hand. Okay, and the second thing is villain needs to have a draw that then either we don't care about the result, it's either folding or it's calling with unfavorable pot odds. Both options are kind of good for us. This is how protection bet is defined here. And then they follow up with, I think, a very good example. You hold pocket nines and the flop comes eight six twos. You might put out a protection bet to prevent other players from hitting outs. What I like here is that it's outs in general and not draws in like the, the sense it's like talked about in like the world out there. So it's not about flushes and straights only we talk about over cards as well on later streets. Here I think this is a sport where we could go back to our cutoff versus button example. Maybe then pocket nine summer big blind steep don't want to do too much betting on eight six deuce out of position. Maybe it's more an in position thing because then you can react to the runouts without like blowing a pot up first and then acting out of position later. But what I'd like my statement to, towards that is just like it's definitely not wrong and it's a great example if we maybe are a little more precise and say like this is button versus big blind for example. But it's just very very specific right we need to have a couple like lots of given things and I'm pretty sure that we need more kinds of protections. Just going back I think like they are saying something like they are describing one of those cases here. I don't know which one to compare but just like one of them right you have a strong but vulnerable hand and we are playing versus a draw so we want to make sure they are either overcharged or they just fold both is good for us that makes sense but they are not talking about that little kid here maybe they're not talking about Bob the Builder it's just they took one example where it makes sense but actually there's way more than that in the poker world and there's way more general spots where we can use the concept of protection whatever it still means we didn't talk about it really right we talked about equity we've learned that it makes sense to always talk about the against what do we have equity against what do we want to protect against this is nice here this is precise protect against from hitting outs like over cards flushes and straights on later streets it's like the word charging is not really in there but it's in there because they call with unfavorable pot odds i like the word charging as well so this is the first things that i like here i think this is too special and not really covering the word protection bet, but it's definitely a correct thing. A protection betting. Protecting means that they would need to fold sometimes. They will never fold a flush draw here. Right, but like this is why I like that explanation for that one here. We are not really protecting in the sense that they fold, but we are overcharging them in a spot where we have, let's say, 60% equity against a flush draw plus overcard, something like that, which is still favorable for us. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support the channel and stay always up to date, then leave a subscribe here or check out our next video.